Okay. Uh, bonjour uh, to Muriel. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, we have a, a large number of attendees today from all over the world. Welcome to all of you from Ireland, from India, from America, uh, from Spain, from USA. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, today, we're going to have a really interesting discussion with Muriel about hello. working in France. Voila, Muriel. Uh, I will introduce her in one moment. Uh, just let me start by just saying uh, a few things. If you want to ask a question at any time, you'll see the Q&A button, uh, button, button at the bottom. If you just click on there, you can ask any question. We will probably deal with questions at the end, uh, but ideally, uh, if they're of special interest in the middle, I'll try and address them. So my name is Anton Dell. Um, I'm running uh, a fashion consultancy, and we help fashion brands to find agents for those that don't know us. Uh, we've been doing this for 25 years. And recently we've started a series of webinars to help brands to find out what it's like to work in different countries. And today is France. So uh, my special guest is Muriel Piazet. And um, welcome. Uh, Muriel is a fashion consultant and she was the director of the pret a -Porter. So uh, Muriel, you've got many years experience uh, in fashion and now you're a consultant. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the kind of work you do and um, so everybody can understand uh, about the work and how you help other people. Yes. First, hello to everybody. I'm very, and thank you, Anton, for the introduction. Thank you to invite me to this webinar. I'm very honored. I will try to do my best, of course, uh, to answer to all the questions, to 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 do this discussion at open mind i think it's super important because uh, uh, and specifically today uh, we need to be together even if we don't see each other it's a great opportunity to have this webinar and to exchange uh, globally globally so yes i'm muriel piazer so i'm um, global fashion developer i'm working i have my company since nine years already nine years uh, and uh, before that i was director of uh, the main uh, feminine ready to wear trade show called pret a -Porter paris and before that i was also involved with uh, who's next so i was in the trade show industry during 15 years so it was a fabulous experience specifically, specifically to give me the global expertise and uh, uh, also in the main of, uh, I mean, uh, industry uh, level buyers, leaders' opinion and brand, of course. And um, uh, nine years ago, I launched my company. So I'm doing uh, specifically... Um, I try to connect brands with buyers. So I'm, uh, I'm doing uh, global business development. So it means uh, I support the brand to try to catch uh, agents or to catch buyers, retail, and to open new markets. And it depends on uh, each brand. You know, uh, I adapt myself to answer as much as I can to their needed. So I'm very flexible also in my global expertise. And uh, I support uh, specifically women's wear, accessory, and jewels because I, I was also involved in one jewelry trade show called The Box. And now, I, since one year and a half, I launch uh, um, an event around fine jewelry called Precious Room. That's my new project but in parallel of consultancy. So I used to do also, uh, as we, we will uh, discuss together, events with fashion fair, fashion trade show, fashion week. Voilà. Globally. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Okay, <laughs> so before we start, I'm going to uh, share with you some inf information about working in, in France. So, um, some really amazing facts about France. I don't even know if Muriel knows this. There are 300 plus the number of fashion shows held in Paris with half of the foreign labels in the official calendar. 
There's 150 billion is the direct turnover of the fashion industry in France. So there's a huge opportunities for people to sell into the French market and 33 billion of export. One million is the number of jobs in the fashion industry in France. 2.7% of the share of the French GDP is generated just by fashion. 1.2 billion is the amount of the annual economic benefits coming from the Fashion Week in Paris alone. And 80% of the export rates of the top 50 French businesses in this sector. So, population of France, 67 million. Spending on clothes, 36 billion. Importation, 3.4 billion. Made in France, 3.3. So all of these facts, you don't have to note. Any of you that are attending the uh, workshop today, the webinar, you will better get a copy of the recording and all this information will be there for you. Um, now the first figure is not quite correct, so I'm gonna correct it. So the number of uh, independent fashion, no, I'm gonna correct that. The no, it's, number, it's, it's, for, it's confirmed, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So the number of shopping venues in Paris is actually 62,000, which is unbelievable. Mm. Uh, and 46,000 independent fashion retail shops. This is really an extraordinary figure. Um, the key multi-brand stores are listed here. The key unibrand stores are all listed. This is the turnover, which as you see, has been just going up every year and the projection is it will keep on going. I have to say this was done before COVID-19. I guess there'll be some alterations to that, but it's on a trajectory going up. And I think this is also interesting and it was also made pre-COVID, offline and online. You can see there's a lot of uh, offline business done in France. Again, I think this will change after COVID, but it's still, a very high number and I don't think it's going to drop back very, very much. Paris Fashion Week takes place twice a year and there's a lot of other fashion weeks during the year in Paris. So there are so much uh, uh, focus is on fashion generally. So um, Muriel, to ask you a question here now, um, let me get rid of this screen. Um, in the past year, in the past, you were running or organizing fashion fairs. What do you see as the future of fashion fairs now after COVID? So I think um, we've just, before you say that, I just want to talk about something that's just come through before you give your answer, uh, because it'll maybe be relevant. Uh, who's next have just listed uh, all the things that are, they're having a show in Paris in September, but they've listed all the safety uh, information and it's quite extraordinary uh, everybody has to wear masks there'll be gel everywhere uh, no badges are printed in the, on, on situ uh, locker rooms are for luggage there's going to be traffic queues to get into the uh, halls with directional arrows a limited number of people in the halls you have to say which half of the day you're going to go to which hall so people will have to know about that and pre-book it. Uh, there's going to be warnings coming out if it's a busy time. So you, even if you're booked in, you may not be able to go. Digital appointments for special meetings. And there's going to be outdoor takeaway food. So all of this must have some influence. We, 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 we all think, Mira and I were talking before, we think it's a bit crazy. So what do you see? That's one thing. But what do you see generally as the future of the fashion shows in Paris and maybe in the rest of the world, if you have some. Thank you, Anton. Thank you, Anton. It's a good question. Uh, before the, the COVID crisis, it was fashion fair were already in the trouble because uh, of course the mutation of the market in general uh, bring uh, uh, a lot of uh, problem in terms of uh, buyer's venue, the budget, also the brands you know, the brand uh, trust that was not the same in the trade show because they were not focused enough, I mean, for the brands in the spe specific services dedicated to brands. So it was uh, already, um, I mean, a certain problem in kind of, uh, generally in the trade show industry. 
uh, a lot of trade show uh, were reconsidering before the COVID about uh, the buyer's services and also uh, the segmentation, you know, to be attractive. But the competition and specifically the showroom competition were already growing growing and a lot of brands were preferring to be uh, I, I mean and for sure it's more relevant in the showroom to be more focused with uh, specific services so a lot of brands already left to the fashion fair so you can imagine the problem so we decreased the number of the brand in the trade show in paris specifically but worldwide and it also depends on the category of the trade show. But the worst in, in the main ready-to-wear feminine. When it's too much generalist, it's a problem. So when it's more niche market, some trade show were succeed, succeeding better. The COVID arrived and it was, I mean, pff, a turmoil. Everybody was, wow, it's com completely unbelievable. And... Uh, the problem that, uh, because a lot, since several uh, years and uh, so many years, the trade show were the, the, the king, you know, about the industry. There was uh, so many people that want to attend it. So we never think that something as the COVID crisis arriving. So now, and the problem also, they didn't consider before the digital transformation. They didn't think before the COVID about having a platform, you know, to do the link between the brand and the buyer. Some of them, as you, you know, the PT Womo example, uh, or White in Milan, they, they did some experience from digital, but not in Paris. There were some try to connect, to, to, to take some meetings, specific meetings between brand and buyer via some platform, but it was not relevant. Re relevant. So now with the COVID, uh, but of course, some, some trade show can sell. And so many trade show can sell, as you know. I think the, the exception is who's next and pret a uh, sorry, who's next that now it's mixed to uh, all of uh, the segments. I think that for me, it's, it's completely, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because I discussed with them two, two weeks ago and they told me, we need to do it, Muriel. I said, but the problem is the buyer's attendance and also the budget of the brands that they don't have a lot of budget. So if they invest, they want, to, and it's completely normal. They want to have results in terms of, you know, order, sales, return, turnover. And they said, no, we just have to do our job. I said, no, it's not a problem of the job. It's a problem of, you know, to be performant in your industry and to don't uh, disappoint. Because if you disappoint, it's, it's also a question of faith. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they try to do some uh, digital platform. They, they announce Tranoyon on something, who's next and other things. But as you can see, and I also read the sanitary chart. Oh my God. I think it's like to, and it, even if it's supposed to give you security, it's not very, you know, something attractive. <laughs> No, no, no. We think there's definitely going to be a problem there. Definitely. I think for, yes. the, for Paris and for everywhere. So, you know... They are um, very in danger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. one of the things that, you know, obviously the agent is going to be more and more important for, for buyers. That, of course. Yeah, because uh, they're going to feel safe going into showrooms. Exactly. So, uh, Paris has got an incredible number of boutiques, as you told me. There's 28 shops for every 1,000 people in Paris alone. Um, uh, how do you think that Parisians are very passionate about clothes? You know that uh, more even than the Italians, would you say? And do you think do you think that there's going to be a lot of shops closing after the difficulties uh, of the last few months with COVID? Or do you think they will survive? I mean, how are they doing now? They've already started to open. I, I have to say, alors first to, to your question about uh, the number of the store, of course, 
Paris and you can imagine it's the capital of fashion before the COVID, I mean. <laughs> it was, it, historically, we talk about international global plays and, uh, you know, because of the luxury, because of the tourist venue. So, yeah. the, I mean, of course, uh, it's, not, it's not only about Parisian clothes, it's about the power of the city in terms of capital of fashion and very attractive before the COVID the pandemic uh, crisis to uh, attract the tourists. Okay, so that's a big uh, dilemma also because they have now to re readapt their offer in terms of clothes because it will be not the same as even if the, the tourists will not travel as usual, they, they, some store, because I discussed with some store, they are doing well if they are the e-shop and they continue to propose personal services you know like a personal shopper and yes. if if some i mean tourist or consumer look about some made in france or something very handcraft or art or from the local industry it could be okay but the problem of course i think some store will close. I'm sorry to say that, but it's like yeah. everywhere in the world, I think. It's not I only focused so. in Paris. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so we think it's going to be, and I think because the French love clothes so much, there'll be plenty. I'm really, uh, I wonder what the Italians think if uh, you're calling Paris the capital of fashion in the world. <laughs> oh, I, I know they get to not. argue with you. <laughs> I think they're but not. I won't say anything. <laughs> Because I love Paris. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> it's a, it's always historic uh, discussion, you know. <laughs> I, I think uh, I prefer French food, so that's important. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it depends. You know, right? so uh, if you're speaking to any agents and people selling, are they planning anything differently for next season? Uh, are they? What What do you think they're? Uh, their approaches to buying to buy <gasps> you mean the uh, alors, the French agent for the moment they are very in difficulty so there's they try to adapt like everywhere in the world I, I think French today it's not French market is the similar of the global problem you know what I mean we yeah. focus on French so we have to discuss on that but I have to say I completely understand the the overview the global overview it will be the a little bit the same yeah. uh, French agent actually they combine digital digital yeah presentation to exclusive personal meeting yeah. they, they want absolutely to keep their relation between the agent and the brand it's it's completely uh, so much so much important and incontournable you know what i mean it's something that we cannot uh, change sure. but they, they need to adapt and the problem also the, the all of the buyer even in france will not travel yeah so so we have to propose something in the virtual way virtual showroom platform yeah and after of course if you if the buyers are able to come show, yeah. the meeting with the french agent will be very exclusive it's why the fashion fair are in very particular you know situation yeah yeah because they don't want to lose time they want they want to focus on the product Sure. The product that secure them, secure in terms of the sales and secure yeah. in terms of the consumer needs. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, do you think buyers in France still prefer to buy French clothes? Or I know for many years, if you traveled around outside Paris, certainly you would see a high percentage of French clothes. Uh, has that changed a lot, would you say? Yes. Yes, it, cha it changed completely. It changed completely because now with the social network, uh, we are global. And that it's not, for me, it's not a question of French or another, uh, I mean, origin. It's the question of the product and what the final consumer wants to have following the press, following the trends, it's a question of product and, and fame of the brand. You know what I mean? It's completely yeah. different than before. Because of the social network, because of the, of course, the digitalization also. 
And I think this transformation is good because it gives the chance to global brands to succeed in to get some into some store in France, a famous okay. store that they dream, you know what I mean, to be yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of brands do you think that are in demand at the moment? And is it more uh, accessoire or is it clothing or what, what kind of brands? Um, you know, people, uh, a lot of people listening are making all kinds of fashion. What kind of things are, would you say are popular at the moment? Or I love the po- Alors, upcoming is uh, specifically in the, I mean, the main famous concept store in France. They follow uh, actually the, the, the trend, you know, between streetwear and luxury. Voilà, streetwear style, like off-white, you know, this kind yeah. of movement. That comes yeah. from also UK because uh, the, like Pam Angel, Simone Walshaw. And, and also we have the famous brand like Jacquemus in Paris that everybody wants because it is very famous because he launched some new trends. So or it's very feminine, very yeah. romantic, or it's very streetwear. In ready to wear, it's very complicated because uh, it's uh, it's linked to some trends that they can see on the catwalks before the COVID, but they will also uh, follow a lot of press magazine, yeah. and in accessories and specifically, uh, well, sneakers are the trend. But now we talk about high heels; they come back. You know, yeah. it's always a, a rem- the same movement. It's you know a cycle. I mean? It's a well, cycle. It's a cycle. And uh, oh, in yeah. jewelry, in jewelry, in fine jewelry specifically, it's more open mind. It's more uh, linked to emotion, okay. not by or always the only the trends. I've heard the word emotion lo- used a lot in recently with a lot of designers lot. talking about it. I think a it's lot. very interesting. Very uh, interesting, yeah. So we, we've had one question from somebody which is kind of connected with this. Uh, the question is, uh, she, she's a Spanish jewellery brand. Okay. Uh, handmade designs, sustainable, uh, and she's interested to sell into the French market. She's asking, is there still a market for this kind of product? Or are there too many options already with French brands or Chinese products? Uh, would it be possible to uh, get into the French market with a Spanish brand like this? I can. I have to say yes, definitely, it's possible because yeah. today it's not, as I said, uh, it's not a question of uh, nationality. It's a question of style and product, yeah. and more. I have to say more in jewelry, fine okay. jewelry and jewelry because. I have to say, prêt à porter, ready to wear, it's more complicated because it's linked to different also. But what I have to say to the brand, it's, all, it's linked to free uh, combination. It's the product, the style, the yeah. price, and the marketing. The buyers, she can take a risk if this combination is, is coherent. Yeah. Okay. And also, this brand has to uh, manage the social network, specifically Instagram, because buyers now, they come to visit first Insta- Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there's like, there's two Thank more you. questions. Yeah, uh, your answers are really interesting. Um, Thank you. Um, th- there's two kind of two points here which I want to raise, and they're kind of connected. So uh, there was an article recently about in the USA uh, that, uh, luxury sales are really, really down, down majorly down, uh, because people are saying, they're thinking, you know, well, what's the point of me buying a beautiful dress if there's nowhere to go? Uh, yes, I read, I read it. I read yeah, it yeah, you right. read it with me. Right, and, exactly. uh, so, and, and this links with a, connect, a, a question that somebody asks here, where, you know, I make special occasion and evening wear. Are these still popular in France? I've noticed that in restaurants, people are much more informal. Uh, what is the market like? You know, maybe before and maybe before COVID and maybe... Uh, uh, the people, the, the person I tell you that it's true. Uh, definitely we are not the same as USA, even in UK or different yeah. country. We don't dress up more, uh, for, I mean, specifically for some occasion, of course, but not like uh, they 
you do or they they used to do in USA. Um, I have to say it's true. So before the COVID, it's like the, it was like this. We just put some high heels with the gym and very as a French touch, as we talk the French touch. Yeah. But but more and more we are dress, we are we are trying to the dress the dress up to be dressed up. It's more relevant today. Well, I mean before the COVID, uh, the glamour it was more uh, coming back. I have to say before than. 10 years ago. Uh, actually, with the COVID, it's true that it's a little bit complicated. We have the same problem. It's why the sales uh, decrease a lot in, pre- in ready to wear. Also, yeah. it's true here. It's true here yeah, yeah. Uh, because people are not going out. You, it's for the moment. But in France, we come back. As you know, we are in uh, the confinement is, is over since uh, one month. So yes. now we go back to the restaurant. We have, uh, you know, the, the, the chance to get a dress up. But in general, uh, it's not the same uh, purchase, purchase yeah. for, to go outside. As example, in USA, uh, I completely uh, understand the situation in USA. I think it's, um, it will be a big problem, but I'm sure they will find another way even to go to some private party and to, to be dressed up uh, to go, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> on those occasions for wedding or birthday. Yeah, yeah, but there'll always be yeah. a reason. I it's think we have to wait, dates. maybe we have to wait a little bit before yeah. they're wearing it. Yeah, yeah I think but so. In, yeah, yeah, but in France, we, it's not a question of uh, style, it's a question of brand. You know, brand logo, brand mix, uh, yeah. trends, it's, it's more, you know, something smooth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And how important is sustainable? Is that um, in many countries it's growing now? Uh, I always think that uh, I'm a little bit skeptical about sustainable because sustainable, sometimes the design is not there. It's sustainable. You're right, Anton. It's always the same dilemma. Actually, we, we read everywhere about the sustainability, the fashion. Yeah. The, it, I think, of course, we, 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 we get into a new area. It's the slow fashion. Definitely, yes, but not only yeah. sustainable. In the slow life in general, we want to spend less money, but to, to be more invest with what we, what we buy. We want to... to to have a different life, more slow, more with mind style, with pleasure, emotion, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Sustainability is true that it's important to consider. Of course, we need for our, I mean, you know, health and, and also uh, to cultivate that. It's super important in the, all the chains you know, yeah. of the fashion industry. But I have to say that the product will be in always... Uh, the most important. You buy your product. If it's sustainable, it's better, but you buy yeah. first the product. For, for a lot of people, it's too much marketing. That's true. And I think the COVID, of course, accelerated the movement of slow fashion. But yeah. it's not only linked to fashion. You know what I mean? It's the movement. But the collection is still important to have the good product in terms of style. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, now, one of the things that's been happening in Europe uh, is that um, because they had three months with no business, oh. the shops have uh, got more stock than they need. Uh, I know that in Germany uh, that the, um, the shops are refusing to pay rent. They're refusing to pay for their orders. They're asking for very big discounts. Uh, in other countries, it's different. I know uh, there's some all kinds of crazy things going on. I know that it's extraordinary in America that uh, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, they don't want to pay yeah. the rent on their store in Manhattan because they say it's no longer got the value it has. So what has been the attitude of French uh, retailers? Have they been paying or have they been holding back money like many people are? Alors, I have to say, it depends on the, the volume, the, the state yeah. of each store. Uh, okay. yeah. I don't hear a lot of, um, I mean, 
problem very hard to manage. I mean, of course, people need to adapt their, their self, uh, their, you know, their, their strategy, uh, yeah. their contact, they, they, they keep the contact with their supplier. They, I know yeah. that there, is, there are a lot of discussion and yeah. try to resolve uh, one, one thing by one thing, you know, to, to manage as much as we can. Yeah. But it's not, uh, we have the support for the government, as you know, as you know. and a uh, lot of stores uh, rethink about the budget inside, they, 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 they call the supplier to change the delivery process, yeah, but, yeah. To close, but to close definitely, I don't hear personally from my side. I'm sure, and I'm sad for that, it will be for some of them, perhaps the t definitive uh, close but yeah. I, I i pray and i hope and also yeah. i have to tell you that the store that they have the digital platform they succeed okay. well okay Better. so uh, what maybe we can just quickly go back to digital because yes um, it's been mentioned a few times um i my view may be different to yours uh, i i see digital as uh an aid for selling not the way to sell um i think it'll always it'll always be a help but uh, i don't think that a buyer from a store can actually buy everything digital because um that's a big responsibility and then you have the question of trust it's seeing it in a in a in a video and when it arrives it can be very different i don't know what do you think about the future of digital selling I'm completely agree with you. Uh, digital will help and support, and buyers can confirm the order when they know the brands, yeah. when they, are, they already buy it and sell it well. But the problem if with the new brand, if they don't touch, because I, I did an Insta Live with a buyer from Dubai and is a good friend of me, she said, she said the same as you said. I, I can have a look, but if I don't touch, if I yeah. don't know the storytelling, if yes. I don't know also uh, the, the, because the storytelling is also very important and the brand yeah. content. I love to, the storytelling, to, yeah. Yes, and, and they said to me, the most important, even if they don't have the chance to know the, personally the designer, yeah. is uh, to be secure about this brand content and storytelling and also the price is very important. So yeah. for, you're completely right. For me, digital help and support. I'm, yes. I'm more, I'm more focused on digital. If you have the the possibility to continue to do this physical process with a personalized meeting, and of also to have the support with digital, it will be okay. If yeah, you yeah. don't have the chance, you can try because I think it's a. Uh, a, a very important support, specifically today with the COVID, you know, crisis. Yeah, yeah. Some people don't travel, will yeah. not travel. So it will be like uh, marketing support. Yeah. But for, from my point of view, uh, I, we have, and the brand have to manage to do a lot of uh, brand content, Insta Live, live streaming shopping. They give to, they try to give life, you know. Yeah. It's complicated. It's complicated with digital, no, no. you know. That makes sense, yeah. No, but it's a sense. challenge. It's a new challenge, I mean. So what about another subject that's come up a lot during the lockdown has been uh, uh, a big desire amongst designers to change the selling season. It was started by Dries van Noten to change so that we don't have this crazy system where we have uh, summer dresses in the shop in January and we have winter clothes in the shops in July, August. Uh, what are the French thinking about this? The I same. know that there's been mixed, mixed messages from different uh, people. You're, I think it's a very good question. Before the COVID, we already talked about see now, buy now. You know, the, the, see now, buy now, yeah. Voilà, before. Okay. So it was already in conscious that there is too much prospect too much collection process, too much acceleration. Uh, buyers have no time. Uh, they, they buy, they, they receive, they have to rebuy. It was completely crazy. It was hysteric. Essentially, they, 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 they say it, it has to be uh, the end of that. So COVID accelerated the process, okay? So I think now it will be more process with capsule collection. Then yeah. we defend that. It yeah. means see now, produce now. 
see now, yeah. produce now. It's more transformation in that. It means less qualitative clothes, uh, slow, slow wear, good, good fabrics to defend the, the process, you know. But after, the problem is the capacity of the brand to be able to be ready in this kind of process. And that's a challenge. And I have to say, for luxury brands, it's more easy than for the small brands. Really? Well, I, when, I, when I was thinking, because I asked you about the Sentier in Paris, because I remember when I was younger many years ago, I used to go there a lot. And of course. Every, every door was full of fashion. Uh, I haven't been for many years. How, how is it? Is it still very strong? And of course, no. that's the place to buy stock, isn't no. it? You always want. Okay. The Sentier, thank you. The Sentier... Uh, that you, you, you knew before, it's yeah. not the same. A lot of Chinese, I mean, uh, Sentier, uh, Saint Ambrose, like uh, in Milan, uh, they, 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 they take the place. You know what I mean? It's much, Sentier as before, it's over. You know why it's over also? Because the Sentier wants to be more in the contemporary premium process today. Okay. Like Mars, Sandro, it, they, they are more following the, 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 the new process of fashion industry. It's, it's not well, like before. Can you, can you say what you mean by the new process? The because they want, they want to be considered as normal brands. Before, before the COVID, we four collection buyers. They don't want right. to, to push uh, because for them it was seen as uh, something bad in terms of the industry process. And uh, also they, they prefer to fame to be famous on the name of the brand instead of the clothes. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. They, were looking, they were looking for fame. And, uh, and, they, and now they take the example of the success stories for, for them, like uh, Bage, yeah. Contour des Cotonniers, Sandro. And for the Sentier now, it's, they want to be like the contemporary brand. They don't want to be considered as, uh, as before. No, it's, it changed a lot. It's 10 years ago it changed and it's accelerated now. Okay. Um, okay, so we have a question from uh, actually somebody who's a client of mine uh, from Bella Balu in Denmark. Hello, nice to meet Hello. you. Um, uh, we're starting up in France. Um, how is the Danish market uh, fashion welcomed in, Dem uh, in France, especially silk scarves with a strong DNA of gift boxes? Uh, I, I, I know very well the Danish market. So I admire the Danish market because I travel a lot and I visit. Uh, I was also involved with SIF uh, Copenhagen. Yeah. Uh, so I visit, uh, I think since 10 years, I'm going to Copenhagen to visit the fair. Yeah. I'm very um, admire and uh, impressed by the Danish brand in terms of the capacity to mix what the contemporary premium uh, brands in France they want to do but they don't succeed so well it's the good it's the good mix of uh, as i said the uh, good product in terms of uh, basic hard value but very very good marketing desire from the storytelling and the dna and yeah. good price and good price but it's true that the french market before uh, I have to say the, the, the Danish brand that don't succeed so much to get into the French market, market except by Malen Birger and even De Birger and Bikelsen that they are very famous, they don't succeed. But by Malen is a good example because they take an agent in France and they yeah. still continue to work with the agent since 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And this agent, to what the importance of agent, Anton, yes. is that the agent uh, position it in the good retail and wholesale uh, this brand. It yeah. means if you can succeed, it means you have to have the support of the French agent or showroom. Yeah, yeah. But I'm very impressed about them. Yeah, good. That's great. They're going to be very yeah. pleased to hear that. Um, very, very impressed. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Uh, uh, swimwear is that important in the French market? Uh, it's, it has been in the past. Uh, more difficult now, would you say? Yes, because uh, 
the competition with the fast fashion, you know, they, yes. they kill the market. They kill the market. We don't have leader brand. Yeah. And, also the, and also the, as you know, the fashion fair, famous fashion fair in swimwear and lingerie, yeah. they had problem today because the, the problem is that we don't have a renew of a brand offer. We yeah. miss new brand. We have some, of course, the designer, emerging brand, but swimwear, it's very technical process. Yes. And if you have technical, even if it's made in France, example, it's expensive. And we have a competitor very important, as you know, Brazil or Italian, yeah, and yeah. they are doing well, and fast fashion, and fast fashion. Okay, so what, what would be a lot of people who are listening today who want to know what is the best, what do they have to do to get into the French market? Obviously, they have to find an agent, but what about social media? And how important is that in France? I'm sure it's the same as everywhere. But, uh, the same, yes, it's the global um, process. Today, what is important for the brand? It's, it's not to get specially in French, but as, you, as we said, global uh, I mean, attendance, yes. global process is to be able to have a good storytelling, a good brand content, and ve to cultivate the hard value of the brand, to be able to have a beautiful Instagram that's super important, and to incarnate, to, to, that the brand needs to be incarnate, incarnated yes. by the designer. So it means you need to do your own storytelling, your own mood board. Because the buyers, and even if you have the department store to catch, the concept store, the buying office, I always say the same. It's not a question of the nationality, it's the question of the product. And of course, you can have support of agents, it's helped a lot, or showroom, or consultants, yeah. because it means you can be you can be support for the acceleration of the business. Okay, that's important. Because me or you, for example, you can be in between the different actors. And of course, buyers or example, leaders' opinion, showroom. I know everybody, but when you introduce yourself, oh, it's more complicated alone. But I discuss, I discuss with the buyers and they said to me, I prefer to be contacted by Instagram, that's super important, Anton, yes. than by email. And also, when you contact a buyer, be very creative. Don't, say, don't send to them a formal email. They don't read at all. No. They prefer to receive a, a video, a beautiful GIF invitation. I mean, it's always what we say, linked to emotion. And they, they discuss with me, they say, Muriel, we prefer to be impressed and to have the impression of wow, yeah, wow yeah. effect. Even okay. if we like or don't like, you know? Well, may, may, maybe what you're saying applies to this next question from uh, somebody uh, from Rita, who is from uh, Portugal, I believe. Um, her brand is uh, Caterina Martin Boots, a Portuguese boots brand. We are known for our vintage and handmade boots. We always had difficulties to entry in the French market. Do you have some advice to offer us? Yes, of course. Alors, uh, today, French market is true that historically, before the COVID, that I said now, it's, I mean, sometimes it could be worse. It is true that the buyers in general, they are not very open mind to, and they don't answer very naturally. I have to say yes. It's true. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> if I talk to French market, because it, it, it's, it's true. I, I'm honest with you. I'm here to be objective. When yes. you don't know them, it's complicated to get in touch with them. But today with the social network and the acceleration of this uh, uh, digital transformation, they are more open. Okay. It means what is important is exactly what I said before, to be very creative in terms of your DNA, your value, your, your, the, the material you send to the buyers. You don't have to say big text like just a PDF. They don't open. I prefer that you send a short video, very, very impactant. 
because it's as I told you, it's it's linked to what they will feel when they will open. So and we're talking about the emotion now. Emotion, emotion. Okay. Yeah. And if you, if, they, if they don't know you, you can try to contact also by Instagram if you have the contact, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. by message. But what is important is to always prove by the value of your product and the content. And That's the price it. also. Price is super important. Position. Okay. And we have somebody here who's asking about handmade bags. We're socially sustainable uh, using alpaca. So uh, it sounds a little bit uh, specialized, I think. I don't know if that would be of interest. Uh, but again, it's a matter of sustainable. So I, I don't really know if that's interesting or not. We have to see. Sometimes you have to see the photographs. You have to see yeah. the brand. But it's certainly worth trying. And if you uh, send it to, to me, I'll better give you my opinion uh, about it. Yes, um, me too. Uh, I'm always open to that. Yes. Yeah, you'll be able to have our contact details at the end of this because uh, we're coming not far from the end of our time now. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, yeah, in the UK, uh, we spend a lot of money on technology, on white goods, you know, kitchen and so on uh, in in and we don't spend so much money or we used not to on clothes in france i think it's the opposite i think you spend more money on clothes and less money on white goods and technology would you has that changed at all again yes uh, i think now it's the same i mean it's equi equi equilibrate now because of the the digitalization everybody now we have we are still on the same page. You know what I mean? In, um, yes. Because today, uh, the, uh, sincerely, clothes are less important for some of them to what you said just before. Because today, what is important is to be in this famous slow life. Yes. It's why also I have to say something also to the brand. Very uh, good, uh, sorry, uh, advice. Yes. I always advise brands to cultivate also the business to consumer process. It means launching the e-commerce as much as they can, the e-shop, and to, to, to get uh, the community, the, their community. When they have the fame with their community, the business to business arrive more quickly. That's important. That's important. I forget. Okay. Because if you just wait about business to business in terms of retail, I have to say today it's more and more difficult. But before the COVID crisis, it was already difficult. So I advise them to create the content and also to launch the e-shop. Okay. Um, important. We have a question from India here. Um, long way. Um, hello, Maza. Uh, uh, quite a, I don't know if you can answer this, it's a little bit. Uh, what, what, what is in the ratio of selling of, of uh, clothes to shoes to jewelry? Do you have a. I love, that, uh, has that, it's probably I love. not too easy to answer that. But, uh, I love. It depends if, uh, if it's on uh, the, the retail or the e commerce. But in yeah. general, now the accessories and jewelry, it's more self, more dynamic than, than clothes. Yes, because yeah. it's a smaller purchase and people have the money for exactly. that. Exactly. And they ha we have also uh, the competition of the, sl the fast fashion that takes uh, a lot of uh, sales part of clothes. Yes. So it means it, it, it depends on uh, the positioning of the clothes in terms of the price and the, of course the fabrics and the fame of the of the brand but in general sales are decreased a lot in pret a -porter, Alors, sorry <laughs> close decrease hello yeah. muriel we're running out of time now so um i just want to thank you so much it's been really interesting getting your insights into business in france and business around the world um thank you everybody so much for attending uh our next talk is going to be about china uh with one of the largest with the largest distributor uh and if you're interested to do business in china do listen in it's on july the 14th i think but your information will be coming towards to you about that
So I'm going to give you um, our screen now, which is going to show you um, uh, the details on contacting Thank you very myself much. and uh, Muriel. I wish you all a very good day. I wish you, Muriel, a, a nice evening, uh, a, a nice dinner. You're very lucky. As I told you before, in London, we can't go for dinner. To oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you so, very uh, much, Anton. Thank you. Okay. Thank you to everybody to, to be part of the webinar and to listen to me. And, to, oui. and I, give you, uh, I give you the best wishes, the best luck. I'm, I'm very optimist and I try, as Anton, I'm sure everybody try to manage the much as yeah. we can. So if you need any Everything. consultancy, you should speak to Muriel. If you're looking for agents, please contact me uh, and do listen in again. And thank you again for listening. Au revoir. Thank you. Bye -bye. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.